IGCSE Computer Science, Syllabus Statement 2.1.2G, Identify Errors and Given Algorithms and Suggest Ways of Removing These Errors. So, now that, we've, um, now that we understand how pseudocode works and how flowcharts work, we can start um, identifying errors in um, um, algorithms that the exam will give you. In fact, I think this, like, this question always appears. Like, like oh, there's always a question where it says um, identify errors in this code. Like, so, like, paper two is quite repetitive. Like, you get your pre-release question, and then you get something like this. And then they ask you short questions like, um, oh, what is repetition? What is um, selection? What's counting? What's totaling? And they ask you, oh, uh, g give a suitable validation check here. They might ask you, oh, a name of verification check and explain it. They might ask you, it's, it's stuff like that. And then they'll ask you, like, um, a, a like trace table question. And they'll ask you, like, a database question. Usually, these database questions are the last questions. So anyway, let's, let's try um, removing these errors. So this question comes from the winter paper from 2015, I think. Um, you can double check that. Um, this is what it says. Read the section of program code that should input 50 numbers and then output the average. Now, there we go. Um, there are four errors in the code. Locate these errors and suggest code corrections to remove each error. Now, yeah, here, um, the first part, it's uh, the first yeah, th th this thing here, that's, that's um, important here. And this is because um, it, sa it says, well, it basically tells you what the code should do. So, it, yeah, it's important that you read this part carefully to understand what the code should do. It should input 50 numbers. Then you can say, oh, okay, well, I know how to write a pseudocode program that inputs 50 numbers and then outputs the average. So, um, I could... I could probably try um, finding errors in this code. So there are four errors. So let's locate these and correct these. Now sometimes um, they have it's although it says suggest code corrections where you have to write the corrections. Sometimes um, some code may not be needed. May may maybe need to be removed or some code may need to be moved to a different line. Now, in that case, you don't have to write everything up. You, have, you don't have to say, oh, this should be, this should, the correction should be, oh, this, and then write it all up. No. Um, you, could just, you could just say that this line needs to be moved, this line needs to be removed. You don't need to, like, write all the corrections. Um, so, yeah. So, first error is total equals total plus one, which is line four. And also, um, you could... No, actually, I'll tell you that later. So this should read um, total equals total plus num, because we're totaling, we're not counting. And because we're totaling, we need to add what the user has input to the total. Um, also, yeah, I, was just, I was just about to say this, um, they give you the lines for each, yeah, they, they give you the number for each line of code. And this is because, um, when you're writing where, where each error lies, you don't have to say, oh, the line where it says total equals total plus one uh, should be total equals total plus num. Well, you, can, you don't have to write all that. You could just say um, the error lies in line four. Um, total, it should read total equals total plus num. So yeah, you could say line four, total equals total plus num. It should read. Then there's line five, counter equals counter plus one. So why is this an error? Well, if we look back, um, there's we, we have a for loop here. And what this means is we don't need to add to counter within the for loop, because the for loop already does this for us in line 7, where it says next counter. So you could say this line is not needed. You could say something like um, correction line 5, uh, remove this line, or this line is not needed, something like that. The next error lies in line 6. Now this line 6 has two errors. The first error is it should be placed after next counter. Um, or it should be placed after line, um, I think it was 7. Yeah, line 7. Um, so yeah, you could say that, something like that. Um, and the second thing is it should read average equals total divided by 50. Now, wh why is that? 
Why does that make a difference? I mean, why? Well, counter, as we know, keeps incrementing until it reaches 50, and then the loop stops. But it has to be 50 for two reasons. One, it's easier because we, you know, we, we don't, we, we're certain what we want to divide by. So we don't have to say total divide by counter because just, you know, just in case we're unsure of what counter may be, it just makes it easier. And secondly, in my experience programming, if you're using a for loop and you have a counter, the counter usually is in the scope of the for loop. And this basically means that it can only be used within the for loop um, and not outside it. So yeah, should read that. And finally, um, this is what the code should look like. So total equals zero, fork counter equals one to 50, input num, uh, num should be like that, not like that, sorry about that, um, shouldn't be capitalized. Total equals total plus num, next counter, average equals total divided by 50, print average. And that's what the code should look like. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, it's good to get some practice with this. Um, so search for other past papers and try these. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's good to know how to correct errors because they always ask you questions like this in the exam.